Is this the best engine by Porsche? Some say so, and when you look at the simple engine design and its roots, it is hard to disagree. Carrera GT's V10 is one of the best sounding supercar engines out there, which we will never see, but we shall learn about it. Back in the 1990s, Porsche had usable racing knowledge from all sorts of competing series. In 1991, the Footwork F1 team was using a Porsche-designed 3.5 leads V12 in their monopost, and for the next season, they commissioned them again for a V10 build. The development started, but Footwork later decided to use a Mugen Honda unit instead. The story had an 8 year long pause after sitting on a shelf unused. In 1998 Porsche experienced several successful races with the 911 GT1 in the GT1 series. During 1998 to 2000 seasons, the plan was to develop a new car known as the LMP2000 or 9R3 and due to various reasons and problems with the original twin-turbo flat 6, specifically weight and cooling, the 3.5 litre Formula 1 engine found its new use. Its displacement was increased to 5 litre and also 5.5 litre. Due to mandated air restrictors, pneumatic valve springs were found redundant and were eventually ditched. The power plant had around 700 horsepower at 10,000 rpm, but sadly, for officially unknown reasons, the one of race car never represented Porsche on a track. Allegedly, engineers in the 9R3 project were pulled out in the Cayenne development, which, after the first gen Boxster, was another serious sales hit that made Porsche a financially stable company. Despite all possible scenarios, the 5.5 litre could have been seen on the 2000 Paris Auto Show in a Carrera GT concept, mounted as a stress member in the chassis. Though the production model was confirmed yet after the release and sales success of the company's first SUV. <laughs> The Porsche Carrera GT was launched in 2003 using a first ever production carbon fiber monocoque and having the engine placed inside it rather than as a part of it for NVH reasons. It was the same 68 degree racing unit but tamed a bit to 612 horsepower. Nevertheless, the all aluminium closed deck engine was enlarged to 5.7 liter by increasing bore by 2 mm compared to the 5.5 unit. Its code name was 980/01 and its rev limit was slightly raised by 200 rpm. Now at 8400 rpm, air was drawn inside by twin throttle bodies into an aluminium plenum with long runners. A Bosch indirect injection in combination with a variable intake valve timing worked on the best air fuel mixture in any given RPM down in the nicasil coated cylinder liners. The combustion occurred thanks to forged pistons with titanium connecting rods and the burned mixture then flashed out through sodium filled exhaust valves. Exhaust headers were of a 5 to 1 type and the dry sump oil system was kept from the race variant. The clutch of the Carrera GT was also race-like, with twin 169mm white plates made of a ceramic composite able to withstand over 1000 Nm of torque. Interestingly, the engine runout speed is over 20,000 rpm. Overall engine's weight was 215 kg. A very cool feature of the Carrera GT is the fact that it has a manual gearbox with 6 speeds, 
operated via 2.5 meter long flexible steel transmission cables. For a further improvement of driving characteristics, it was a taller transaxle unit, not to overhang further back over the rear axis. There was no flywheel. This function was engineered with a clever design of input gearbox shafts. I think it is safe to say that this is material and engineering wise as an exotic engine as the Yamaha developed LFA V10 engine. The LFA doesn't have a race sourced engine, but alongside the Porsche V10, they are the pinnacle amongst V10 road engines. Enjoying these detailed videos about specific engines, feel free to suggest your motor for a future video. Cheers!